As another example of how linked tables are useful, I'm going to do a fees thing with these people. They're in the Game Development Club. Obviously, you have to pay fees to be part of that club. It's going to be like $10 a month or something. Uh, we need to think about how we store that. Now, uh, one possibility, I guess, would be to add a field on the end here, which would be fees. And it might be $10. And I guess you'd have to put a date field on as well to say when it was paid. It's going to cause problems though if they stay in this $10 a month and uh, the, the second month, what do we do? Do we add another field? Do we write over the data? It's not a good solution. So we're going to do another table to store fees and we'll see how that is a much better solution. So close that one down and create table table and into design view TBL fees. It's a good name for it. And we'll keep a unique identifier. Every record should always have a unique identifier. And um, so what we're going to do is put in uh, field names. So fees paid, maybe. That would be a pretty clear kind of thing that we're doing there. Uh, is text a good thing for fees paid? I don't think so. Let's go with currency. And these are all down here. And how about uh, a date paid? Remember, date is never a, bad, a good name for a field um, always date something date time and I think I'm going to go with uh, this one I don't need to know the time I just want to know that it's a short date so if I just check that save it and let's just think about how we're going to use this I've got the fees paid the date paid but I don't have any link to which student paid this so what I'm actually going to do is add one more field, and this is the crucial one, which is going to be the student ID. Now, this is going to refer to the student, and in the students table, or the members table, perhaps I should call it member ID. I'm going to call it member ID. It's good to be consistent when you're naming things. Uh, member ID is going to be a number, and I remember from before, it's a long integer to identify that student. So now what I can do is I could say maybe student number uh, one paid his fees yesterday and paid $10, something like that. And student number uh, two paid a $10 fee and that was also yesterday. But maybe then I could think, oh yeah, and of course I need to record the fact that member ID 1, who is member ID 1? Let's just open it up. Fiana Megaro. Uh, she also paid her fees. So this is another record, but this was a previous month. So we just go back to uh, July. So she also paid a $10 fee there. So I've got her recorded twice, two different entries for the two different lots of fees that she paid. Cool. So let's just do the relationship and query thing, just like we did on the last time we did that. So always a good idea to close all your tables, go into database tools, my relationships, they'll be there from last time. But I'm going to need to show another table, which is the fees table. Drop that in there. And I've got the member ID, which refers to this ID over here. So I'm just going to do the same thing, drag and drop, tick, 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 just because we do, create. And so I've got one student can pay many lots of fees, one to many relationship, tidy up how that looks. Excellent, close, save, and then let's go and create that query that actually uses that. So query design fees and members this time and again the relationship shows up here never have two tables up here that don't have a relationship between them if you do it will go horribly wrong you'll get thousands of records that will make no sense so family name given name and what the fees paid were and what the date paid was so we've got three records that Fianna Magor paid her fees on in once in August and once in July and then Renard paid his fees uh, once in August. Cool, all good. And of course not forgetting to save that query as QRY fees paid. Done. 